Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about transformations of the absolute value equation. So basically what we have here is I have what we call the parent graph. And the parent graph, you can see, is the absolute value of x. And basically, you can create a kind of a table for this, actually, which I probably should have done. Um, and what I want you to see about when we create a table for absolute value, you know, depending on whatever values we choose, um, but it creates what we call the v graph. So I, if I did um, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, you can see that the absolute value shows up creating this V-shaped graph, okay? Where the kind of the slope is over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, even though this is over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, even though that's negative and that one's positive, you can kind of see it creates that same shape. Now, we are going to get into different videos when that shape is going to be compromised, meaning it's going to be stretched or um, compressed or stretched. However, for right now, what we're basically going to do is just talk about the transformations, just how we're going to take that graph and we're going to shift it. So you can see in all of these equations that I have, I have the absolute value of x. But I also am adding and subtracting numbers outside of it and adding and subtracting numbers inside of it. So how is that going to affect the graph? What is that going to do to our parent graph to adjust, what, to, to, adjust to the new graph? So to understand that, we've got to know, some trans, we got to know our transformation form. So, Transformer form is x minus h plus k. Okay? And basically, what they're going to do is h and k are going to represent some different transformations. k is going to represent the vertical transformations, and h is going to represent the um, horizontal transformations. Now, remember, it's, uh, oh, we're getting to the opposite of k. We'll get into that in a second. So, anyways, let's go and take a look at, um, let's go and take a look at uh, k. Now, when k is positive, what that's actually going to do is that's going to bring the, raise, the, um, raise the graph seven units up. So basically, when you can look at a problem like this, um, what I wanted to show you here was, uh, OK, yeah. So if you took your x value and you plugged in a negative 2, but then what you did is you add 7 to it, you could see that the y is going to be much larger. So I, I don't want to go through the table of values, but you could easily plug in these coordinate points and create another table. But what you'll find is when you add 7 outside of our absolute value brackets, that's going to, and that's positive, you're going to raise the graph up. So basically to graph this, all I'm going to do is go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm basically going to take this graph and shift it all 7 units up. Now, the shape of the graph is still going to be over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So I'm just going to go over 1, up 1, 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 over 1, up 1. So the shape of the graph does not change when we have a vertical or a horizontal transformation. All we're, shift, all we're simply doing is taking this graph and shifting it 7 units up. When we're subtracting outside the absolute value, that's going to take the graph and shift it down 2 units. So instead of my vertex, which is where the graph cha where the slope changes from negative to positive, or its minimum value, the vertex is now, instead of it being at 0, minus 2 is going to tell you to shift it down 2. So I'm going to go down 2 units. But then again, again, follow the pattern of the parent graph. Nothing has changed to that function. Nothing has changed. Um, we'll, we'll talk about how it does change. But all we're doing is subtracting it 2. So that's going to shift the graph down 2 units. So the vertex has now been shifted down. It's still over one, up one, over one, up one, and then over one, up one. OK, there we go. Now, here's where it gets a lot of students. Um, the x minus 5, or x plus 3. Um, so that's going to be representing our horizontal transformation. h is going to be shifting graph left to right. Now, we know that to the right is positive and up is positive, to the left is negative, and down is negative. So the common thing is, when we add, add outside the absolute value, we go up. When we subtract, we go down. So it would make sense when we subtract inside that we go to the left. And when we add inside, we would go to the right. But remember, the equation says y equals x minus h, or the absolute value of x minus h. So you're subtracting h. So what actually is the value of h? In this case, h is actually a positive 5. So actually, 5 is not negative. It's actually positive. 
because it's x, the formula is x minus h. So x minus 5. That means h is equal to 5. So since 5 is positive, we're actually going to be moving it to the right instead, because it's actually not really negative. That's just a part of the formula. So it really confuses a lot of students. The best thing I can always say is, or the easiest way I can say to remember it, is just remember you know, your horizontal transformation is like the opposite. So if you see it as x minus 5, you're going to be shifting it to the right. However, it really is not negative. It actually is positive. So going to the right should make sense. So now all I'm going to do is take my parent graph and shift it over to the right. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Instead of the vertex being at 0, I'm moving it to the right. Then, again, I'm just going to follow the same pattern. So 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. And then do the same thing over here. And there you go. So in the same exact case, this one gets a lot of students because they're like, well, now it's not subtracted. It's x plus 3. Well, remember, we could write this as x minus a negative 3. So in reality, it's x minus h. x minus h. That means h is equal to negative 3. So actually, we're going to be shifting it to the left. Or if you see x plus 3, just know, oh, it's inside the absolute value, so it's opposite. It's going to go to the left. So instead of my vertex being at 0, it's going to be at negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Then again, just follow the same patterns. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1. Over 1. Oops. Over 1, up 1. It should look like that. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1. OK? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value function with transformations, vertical and horizontal. Thanks.